Hey, Work Positive Nation, does it ever seem like there's the you everybody experiences at work and then there's this ideal you? An ideal you who's different from that other you? So how do you close the gap between these two yous so you positively level up across all areas of life and work? Hmm? My guest today is a best-selling author and was voted the top business coach to work with in 2023 by Apple News. So let's discover together how you become your ideal you and create a positive work culture in this episode of the Work Positive Podcast. Welcome to the Work Positive Podcast with your host, executive coach and culture architect, Dr. Joey Fawcett. Discover strategies and tactics that work positive as Dr. Joey talks with industry leaders who create a positive work culture that attracts top talent and reduces team turnover. Discover how you can create a work positive culture that increases productivity and profits. Here's your host, Dr. Joey. Work Positive Nation, help me welcome to this episode of the Work Positive Podcast, somebody you're going to love. I mean, I've been with him a few minutes already. That's the cool thing about being a podcast host. You get to talk to your guests before you start recording. You're going to love him. <laughs> I know you are. Brett Ballman is in the Work Positive house. Brett, thank you so much for being here, man. Thank you, Dr. Joy. I'm a big fan and super excited to chat with you. Thanks for what you do. It's it's fantastic. Well, dude, you're the one. I mean, I can't say that all my guests have been declared the best business coach by Apple News, right? I mean, uh, you have, right? Yeah, thank you. That was quite an honor. I, you know, like you, it's 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 the work, right? I appreciate that, but all it does is confirm that I'm doing the right thing. For me, it's like accolades just say, keep doing what you're doing, right? Mm. Um, that's the great thing is knowing that something works. Mm, yeah, and that people's lives are being transformed and improved, exactly. and growing and developing more of who they're intended to be. By the way, Work Positive yeah. Nation, um, one of the early guests for this podcast was my dear friend, Dr. Ivan Meisner. And so this guy, Brett Ballman, hangs out with Dr. Ivan Meisner, too. So you can go back to season yeah. one. I think it's like the third or fourth episode uh, and check that out. And so... I'm blessed. Work Positive Nation, you're blessed to hang out with some awesome people. And Brett Ballman is one of those people. So, Thank Brett, you. work culture, as we were talking about before we started recording, work culture mm -hmm. has become such a more important topic today. Mm -hmm. Right? We are realizing that these are human beings doing the work. Some people yeah. would want to find a singular causality and say, oh, it was a pandemic. You know, that that's what, what forced it. I, I don't know. I believe in multiple causalities. Why do you think uh, there's some other causes, Brett, for why we suddenly are interested in work culture so much? Yeah, you know, I think that it has to do with a couple different things. I think one, it's the level of stress. The stress levels have gone up greatly in the past mm -hmm. 20 years. True. I think that has to do with, you know, anybody that's running a business like us, you know, whether it's been, I've been doing this 23 years, you know, once you get in this a little bit, you realize the amount of things we have to do to be successful, whether you're a business owner, an executive, a manager, an employee, an entrepreneur. It used to be, you know, I was like the guy that had the pager, you know, I was like getting coaching calls at a pager. I'd pull over to a payphone and just call. And that was it. Yeah. You didn't get a lot of stuff going on. I wasn't checking a feed and doing stuff. And I think the stress levels of how much you have to manage just to survive now mixed in with the continual perpetual knowledge you have to keep gaining on like learning new technologies, learning new services. This is updated. This is synced. And the competition is getting heavier. The jobs are, there's less jobs for more people based on I, uh, AI or just the amount of people that are in the workplace. Yeah. I think that that's really caused a lack of performance and confidence in people's work. And therefore, unfortunately, it causes business owners a lot of times and companies to focus on the bottom line because they're trying to survive and we forget about the people. Yeah. And the bottom line, of course, has lots of different definitions, but the financial bottom mm -hmm. line is something that's, uh, it, it's black and white. I can look at it. Well, it's yeah. red and black. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Exactly. Yeah. So, so I can look at it and, and I can say, here's something tangible. Mm -hmm. Man, when you start talking about stress, it's like squishy stuff, right? Yeah. And, and and so right. how do we, in a world that looks for where it can control, or as my friend, Dr. Bob Johansson says, is looking for certainty, mm -hmm. we can't produce certainty today, but we can produce clarity Yes. So how do we move more towards clarity in creating our work cultures? I think that's fantastic. You know, something I'm really passionate about, Dr. 
Joey, that I do with uh, my executive clients and with companies when I go and consult them is it has to do with creating clarity and creating inspiration. I, I just say that every problem you have can be solved by being the best version of yourself. Mm. And by that, what I mean is stepping into a mindset, not only where you, of course, your motivation, your focus is improved, but you're actually activating neurologically different parts of your mind. Yep. So you're getting more access to the resources. You're, you're performing at a higher level. So I believe when you work, whether you're managing people, consulting people, whether you're designing your SOPs for your company, I think you have to get to know the person individually and help them discover what they're passionate about. But nobody's, nobody shows up in an insurance company. You know, State Farm says, I just, oh, every day I can't wait to sell State Farm insurance. <laughs> if you under, right? I mean, nothing against State Farm. They're great. But the yeah. thing is, if you say to yourself, if I make and when I make X amount of money this month, I can pay my mother's medical bills and help her have peace of mind and ease in her life mm-hmm. and have gratitude for what she's done for me, then the job has inspiration and motivation and you're committed to it. Mm-hmm. But if we're just looking at the bottom line, you lose the person. So I think you have to find what drives them at the unconscious levels. Mm-hmm. What's the thing that makes this person tick so they can either say this is fulfilling a dream or it's creating fulfillment and opportunity for me to grow. And then I think you have to find the things that inspire them. Everybody is motivated differently, right? There's the carrot or the stick. And so it's like, what is the thing I can put out there and the correct measurement of progress to allow somebody the runway to see growth? Because I believe we're happiest when we're growing and challenged. Mm -hmm. And so if you're stuck and you're just being crushed by the work, that's different. But if you see a pathway and you bump up against those challenges and you see yourself figure them out, that breakthrough is incredible. That's inspiring. And then the clarity through the passion tells you this is what I should be doing or shouldn't be doing. And the fog, that fog, like you're saying, without the clarity, that's a killer, a killer for motivation and killer for performance. Yeah, it really is. Shout out to all the State Farm agents I've ever worked with. Yeah. The most successful yeah. <laughs> ones, Brett. The most successful ones were the ones who sit, who tell me stories about um, writing a life insurance policy on oh. a, a parent that's got a new child, right? Yeah. And then they mm-hmm. they contract cancer or something, a uh, yeah. car accident or something takes them out of here. So they have created a livelihood, a, a lifestyle. Yeah. For legacy someone. of health and security exactly. absolutely for someone who's no longer here so you know that that yeah. other parent and that child are cared for and protected mm-hmm. it's amazing my dad's actually uh, an insurance agent he's been selling for like uh 60 years one of the top Is in the country really? so i love insurance agents <laughs> yeah he's and he's an amazing he's an amazing man yeah, yeah. Especially you, Mr. Ballman. We we love you. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Amazing. Yeah. We need more men saying they love their dads in the world, right? Yeah. So yeah. If if you're connecting around uh, passion, aligning that with purpose. So we're looking at an mm-hmm. individual passion aligning with the company purpose. Mm-hmm. That's what we're talking about. Mm-hmm. And yep. therein lies the clarity. How do we, Brett, communicate that as we're attracting top talent to our companies to create the kind of positive work culture that you and I both know is so successful? Yeah, that's a great question. You know, something that I've been uh, very proud to be a part of and excited to see improving has been companies that translate when they're bringing somebody in, whether it's articulated in their the job listing they're putting or whether they do it when they bring somebody in, having a clear path already to grow having development being a part of the process. Because so many places, you put somebody in a seat, the training is a day or two, and you're like, let's go. And then you're tracking (laughs) someone's performance when they don't feel confident. So I think you have to show someone that the company isn't just here about us. We're a company that we want you to be, feel like you have an ownership in the company. Mm -hmm. So creating a, um, (laughs) excuse me, a path of development, of leadership, of how there's accountability. So you can see, oh, when I do this, I will grow. And you have these, I always say, have weekly meetings, monthly trainings, have quarterly like retreat trainings, do yearly big ones that people earn and give them that fuel, fuel that fire so that people see like, wow. And as I go, you're going to keep reinvesting into me as a person, not just expecting from me. Mm. And Brett, now you're talking about one of the things that's near and dear to my heart and I think is a a huge game changer in transforming Mm -hmm. work cultures today to become more positive. And that is belonging because belonging really occurs at a root level when I can see how my everyday task give expression to the company mission Mm -hmm. and I understand my place in that relationship. And I also, as you're talking about, I have 
I refer to the whole thing as an equity of exchange, but I have a path that I know I'm going to grow, I'm going to develop, mm-hmm. and I'm going to move forward so that there's that, you can call it a career path if you want to, or fulfillment path, mm-hmm. whatever. But I see my everyday task connecting with the company mission, and I see my yeah. role there. Belonging, at least in the cultures that I'm working with, that's as important as any other factor that you can talk yeah. about is absolutely. Belonging. Because it includes becoming, the greatest, yeah. right? Yeah, the greatest thing. I mean, like if you think about it, what's the, the the biggest punishment you can get if something happens? You go well, you go to prison, you put solitary confinement. Yeah, you no longer belong. It's the mm. hardest thing for us to do is to be alone and not feel that we belong. Mm. And I think about like children. I think children, children, and going to the gym are the greatest metaphors. I think for life, there's two. They just match up for everybody, right? If you yeah. look at a child, when a child has nurture, has engagement, has care that child usually flourishes and they're very healthy and they have a lot of emotional intelligence. Yes. Employees at a company, a lot of times, again, they don't get that uh, engagement. And I think it needs to be consistent so you know you're cared about. It's not always coming in and showing what you've done wrong. It's supporting you to grow. And so I always consult companies and managers, executives. I say, look, have a touch every week. Let somebody know you're there. Let them know that there's always training available. You'll always step and you'll have something at least every other week. And every week you're checking and measuring goals and progress, not to, not to restrict them or to, uh, you know, give them some kind of punishment, but instead to say, Hey, look, this is great. Here's your progress. How can I help you? What do we miss the mark? And what can we do to advance that? And then you feel cared for right beyond somebody wants to see you succeed rather than just see you hit the bottom line. Oh, absolutely. And you're putting just enough pressure on me to bring out the best in me, right? I'm yes. convinced all growth lies just beyond the edge of my comfort zone. So yeah. there's got to be a little discomfort, yeah. a little wiggle there, yeah. right? In order for yeah. me to become my better self, I've got to... A little it's spotlight a where it has to be improved, right? Yeah. Like, like, oh, here's an area like, ooh, that's uncomfortable, but I can grow from it. Absolutely. Well, yeah. everybody else around me already knows it because <laughs> <laughs> we're in a relationship, right? We're working yeah, together. Yeah, yeah. Or right. if you want to bring it home, your spouse already knows it, right? So, uh, yep, exactly. You, you might as well work on it and make it happen. So, I love what you're talking about here in terms of attracting top talent. One of the things we can talk with them about is, look, we don't fire hose you for two or three days, mm-hmm. peel your skin off, and expect you to be confident and competent in what yeah. you're doing around here. We're actually going to be a part of a great adventure with you because we want Mm -hmm. to stay for a long time so let's 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 move away take a step back from that dating hard right Mm -hmm. Uh, kind of metaphor to where we're literally attracting people then once Mm -hmm. they join our teams brett what are some ways that we can keep them there so that they're being fulfilled yeah i think that kind of parlays off of that i think it's the level of engagement I think that teamwork, it's so funny how teamwork is such a thing that we correlate and and, and fundamentally think of when we think of work, but so many companies don't really have teamwork. Everybody's competing as an individual. You know, you have a manager that has, you know, 10, 20, 50 people underneath them. They report to them and they don't see them. They don't feel like they can trust them. They don't bring things to them. So I think that number one, you have to have real team building. Mm -hmm. And by that, I mean, it needs to be weekly and monthly. And then you need to have a clear line of communication. A lot of companies, you know, I don't like to throw around words that feel like it makes something disassociated, like SOP, standard operating procedures. But sure. when you build them right, you're building the care into the company. And mm-hmm. so having a clear channel, of like this is how you communicate a challenge to me. And when a challenge comes to me, this is how we handle it and how we re- how we train you up, train you to do better. Because mm-hmm. I'll talk to so many companies and uh, they'll tell me, oh, we got this person that has an issue going on an executive. Would you work with them? I say, yeah, tell me what's going on. What's been the feedback? They tell me the feedback. I go, okay, how did you translate this to the person? Like, oh, we haven't talked to him about it yet. <laughs> you're, you're asking me, you're asking me to That's come why in. We're bringing you in, Brett. <laughs> yeah, they don't know there's a problem. Then I go, okay. And so how did you, when the person brought the problem in, how did you talk to the person that brought the problem about them? And like, well, we're waiting to find out. And I'm like, and then, so that person that had a problem has not been given any guidance. So they're still out there. Right. Uh, just, and there's just a total disconnect. But if you know there's an issue, when there's an issue, on this day, we'll sit down and have a meeting. When we have the meeting, we're going to go over what we can do to improve it. The next week, we're going to do an up training, do that. Then we're going to be 30 days to improve. We're going to keep checking on it. Mm-hmm. You're at peace. Again, the clarity, right? When you remove, clarity. it's like, this is how things are going to go. Right. So that I always know how I can improve. I think that is the real key. So people say, wow, there is real care. It's mm-hmm. just not a tag word or a slogan somebody's throwing around to yeah. try to get people hired. 
but it's actually the fundamental components and the structure, the DNA of the company. Yeah. So I think the teamwork and the communication being built in so people understand this is how things go. So I can execute, right? Mm. I always say I'm a super results driven and the only way you can get to really good results is by being able to focus on execution and not having a lack of clarity on what I'm supposed to be doing or why I'm doing it. Mm. You can't perform well unless you know what the game plan is. Yeah, I got to know where my metrics are and what are the marks that I'm trying to hit here. I absolutely yeah. love what you're talking about. The care is baked into the SOPs. Because uh, yeah. at the end of the day, we're all just trying to figure it out. And if yeah. I'm unclear, if I lack clarity about what it is I'm supposed to do, and I'm just going to try to figure it out on my own. I'm going to yeah. make stuff up until yeah. Yeah. someone says, hey, yeah. Joey, maybe that wasn't your best effort. Okay, why wasn't that my, my best effort? I was trying to figure it out the best I could. Oh, yeah. you want me to, instead of that mark, you want me to fire at that mark. Okay, right. then it can yeah. work together. And the communication yeah. piece, man, if you're caring about people in your company, you're having regular, consistent conversations. And exactly. so like, we've got the uh, biannual performance review coming up next <laughs> yeah. You know, like, no. Yeah. The Looking at the charts. Just. Yeah. <laughs> it's a relationship. So yeah. if we're not doing those things, if we're not baking care into our SOPs, it seems to me that one of the great challenges occurs. And that is, and Brett, you talk a lot about this. There's the ideal me or the ideal mm -hmm. you is the way you talk about yeah. it. So yep. that's the me that I think everybody's seeing because that's my perfect me. That's the one that I think mm -hmm. I'm projecting. But the fact of the matter is I'm not always my ideal self. And so when yep. you're not caring for me enough or when you're keeping secrets from me about my lack of performance, mm -hmm. I'm, there's no way I can be my ideal me. So yeah. how do we uh, – it seems like one of the challenges is this – differentiation between who I'm coming across as and my ideal mm -hmm. self. How do we in yeah. companies create a culture that really brings out the best in someone so that the ideal me is showing up for work? Yeah. You know, I think that, you know, it's funny because I believe, and I've done this with a lot of companies, everything I've consulted, every company I've, uh, I've owned, we have a daily routine, just like you hear how important a daily routine is in your personal life. Sure. I always instill a daily routine into the company. And what that does is it challenges the person to get clear on what their drivers are, what their motivation or passion is, what their goals are, and their metrics to measure their own personal me metrics, their own daily mm. process. Okay. Then when you have the managers engage and track this with each person, instead of sitting down and taking a measurement from my perspective as the manager and saying, hey, here's what I see you doing wrong or isn't right, I sit down and say, let's look at your metrics and tell me how you're measuring up. So that they can, one, have their own experience of how they measure where they need to improve and what's falling short, but also have somebody outside showing them where they think they may be off track and not seeing something because their perspective is off. Mm -hmm. I find that in doing that, it allows the person to have a more open experience of where they need to grow. So they're open to the, the feedback. Mm -hmm. But again, what it also does is a fascinating thing about like saying affirmations. I teach people to do this process in the morning. When you say them, sometimes people will say, well, if I say this thing, then I, and I'm not that thing yet. It feels weird. Like I'm lying to myself <laughs> and I have to reframe them. I say, here's the thing. Instead of thinking about lying to yourself, if I, if I'm not a good listener, mm -hmm. I tell myself every day, I'm a great listener and I love having engaging conversations and it doesn't resonate yet. Instead of feeling that you're lying, say, what do I need to do for that to resonate? What change do I need to make in myself that's going to allow that to become a reality? Mm -hmm. And so I believe when you set these, these daily routines with, with the employees and have the managers helping guide them through that, you can say, what's not resonating? What doesn't seem real? What are you talking about that is not authentic to you? What do you feel that's not hitting the mark? And then let's dig deeper. Why is it not hitting the mark? What, you know, word, maybe we need to skew differently. Maybe that's not the problem you're having. Maybe sometimes we lean into the problem we know we can solve, hmm. right? And we don't, the thing that we want the thing we least want to do is the thing we need to do most. And so we don't see it become a blind spot. And so I think that's what you need to do with employees is have a daily routine, have a clear path for them, have the managers give them feedback as they open up and present their own experience and then allow them to see where the blind spots are that will refine them. And then it ends up being, it is a, a personal development experience where you grow with the company and grow in your role rather than just trying to be number based or financial based. 
So what, uh, yeah, financial based only. So what you're describing is an observation and collaboration process. Exactly. And, and it's that old triad about I see me, I see you, I see you seeing me, yeah. right? And yeah. so just creating that communication so that we're speaking into that with mm-hmm. each other. Here's what I'm observing. What are you observing? So that it becomes this dialogue between the internal affirmation and the external mm-hmm. confirmation, right? Yeah. And, and right. therein lies the key to that that dialogue, man, I love that because then that allows me to become my ideal self. And I've got a, um, I've got a voice speaking truth to me mm-hmm. instead of that inner critic who's lying yeah. to me. Right. Right. If it right. seems like a lie, it's just that inner critic lying to you. Yeah. So, uh, shutting up that inner yeah. critic. <laughs> you know, I think also you're so right. I think also, you know, another thing that I've found that's really, I really like to infuse teamwork. I think the more collaboration we have, the more work becomes fun. And when it's fun, you become more creative, more curious, and more innovative. And so whether you have a work buddy or whether you have an accountability buddy or whether you have teams, like whatever the team is, that people get together and they share these things with each other. Because again, if you, sometimes it's a manager or someone that you're reporting to, you have a scarcity mindset or fear is baked in. So like when something's, oh, my performance is off, you get afraid to, to go up yeah. to the next level and talk about it. Right. Whereas if you have a peer, and you're, hey, I need help with this. I'm, I'm struggling with this thing right now. Where are you at on this? Then you tend to collaborate and you share resources and skills, right? And you're usually working there at the same time together with the managers overseeing 50 people. You have an opportunity to work peer to peer. So I think, mm-hmm. again, baking in that teamwork and collaboration is a key. People feel comfortable that this is a place that cares. My peer cares about me. My team cares about me. The management cares about me. The company's doing this. And it's hard to feel like you don't belong. Mm, Yeah. And most of the time, we'll say at least nine out of 10 times. By the way, that's a made up statistic, but I think it's true. (laughs) Yeah, I'm resonating with it. (laughs) I'm going to learn from my colleagues more quickly and more effectively because we're on that journey together. Yeah. We're trying to figure it out together. So, hey, when you face this situation, what did you do? How did it work out for you? What would you do differently? So we're asking questions of each other. We're listening more attentively and actively, and therefore we're all growing together. Yeah, absolutely. I love and it's it. fun, right? It's that's way more fun. <laughs> oh, a ton more fun than you know, feeling like you're going into the principal's office, right? <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> so Brett Ballman is my guest on this episode of the Work Positive Podcast. Brett. Work Positive Nation is going to want more of you. I want more of you. Shoot. Uh, wow. How do we get more of you, man? Great. Thank you so much, Dr. Joey. You know, um, easiest thing is to go to my website, brettballman.com. If you search my name, you're going to find a lot of stuff out there. Most of it good, most of it true. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, a couple of things. I also, you can go there and uh, I have an amazing retreat that I'm doing. Uh, my action mastery retreat later this year in Tulum, which is fantastic. It's a uh, seven-day immersion in Tulum. I take people through a real opportunity to peak, to grow your peak performance, mind, body, and spirit. And before it, we do two months of one-on-one coaching. So you get two and, you know, almost like two and a half months with me, but you can find that there as well. When you go to my website, everything is there. You can uh, click the link. It says action mastery. and You'll see the retreats there. And those are some great places to find me. And then all the socials, I'm just on there by my name. Right. And all of that information is in your show notes. So yeah. you know what I always say, work positive nation, whether you're walking the dog or on the Peloton, right? By the way, we still yeah. have yet to have Peloton reach out to us and <laughs> offer us anything. Right. We're mentioning yeah. them in just about every episode. So if Peloton, if you're listening, come on, man, help me out here with at least yeah. a treadmill, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> Whatever you're doing, because people listen to these things, Brett, on the go, right? All of it, all of that information he just mentioned is in the show notes. So you can follow him on social media, find his website. Also, you got a book, Strategies for Success. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a great book. I uh, put a collaboration between some of the great minds that I knew in the personal development field, Jack Canfield, Mark Victor Hansen, Marie Diamond from The Secret. Uh, Dr. Ivan Miser wrote the foreword. Uh, just an amazing collection of people. And we all brought our, what we felt our most important and powerful strategy was that helped us create success. So it's just easy read every chapter you read. And this is a strategy you can take out and apply right now. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Well, as you know, Brett, here in Work Positive Nation, uh, we are action oriented. I mean, we can talk about a lot of things, but until somebody does something, right? It, yeah. Does it really count? One of my favorite sayings is learning is better behavior. So when I actually learn something, I'm doing something better and I'm doing something differently. So 
Work Positive Nation knows what I'm going to ask Brett because yeah, I ask it every episode, right? Brett Bowman. <laughs> yeah. What one thing? What one thing can Work Positive Nation do starting today to transform and create a positive work culture? What's your one thing, Brett Bowman? I love this. You know, this is my thing that I kind of. It's a great passion for me, and I think every time I present this to someone, I think that it creates a lot of value. Mm. I would say challenging yourself to measure the impact you're making and ask if it fulfills the impact you want to be creating and how you can level that up. Cause sometimes we think what we're doing is creating a certain impact and there's ways to amplify that. And I love what you're doing. I think it's fantastic. And so I think there's probably ways if you're looking at say, how can we even be bigger? Cause what you're doing is incredible. It's so needed. You know, mm-hmm. when we get people enjoying the work they do, like you said earlier, then it becomes that work is the fuel for life. It's not the stress for life. It's not the thing we dread. And so I just say bigger impact, getting out there and getting your word out, your name out as many places as you can, because the message is fantastic. And uh, I enjoy the show. I love your your energy and candor and you make it fun. And that's, that allows people to integrate and learn, right? Like we were talking earlier, sometimes if it's robotic, like if you're listening to infomercial, no one's learned, no one's learning. (laughs) But wait, there's more. (laughs) Yeah. 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 So just keep well, doing what you're doing and keep seeking higher impact, you know, just a bigger audience because I really enjoy the show. Uh, thanks, man. I appreciate that a lot. And the more value we provide, the greater the impact. And so right. what a great one thing for us to do is just look at how much value we're providing to others as yeah. we make that transformation from me to we. Right. It's yeah. about that yeah. team that we've talked so much about in this episode. So what's the value that you're providing to your team? How can you increase that value? And especially mm-hmm. around impact, because the impact is defined right. by them. Yes, exactly. All right. Yeah, I always think it's magnificent when you look and I'll work with companies and I say, you know, what what are you what's your mission? What are you doing? And uh, what's the intention of the company? Okay, let's look at demographics and let's see where that's translating. And they're like, oh, wow, we were here to help men at this age do this. And 75% of our audience is women at this age achieving this. I'm like, yeah. So that's good because you're making an impact, but you got to get clear on where the impact is happening, right? Mm -hmm. And follow the customers. (laughs) Exactly. Yeah. Thank you so much to Brett Ballman. Uh, Strategies for Success is the book. BrettBallman.com is the website. Uh, just go there and have some fun and especially jump on because I'm going to get into that uh, breathing exercise thing that you do yeah. each day. That, that's absolutely yeah. amazing. So let's get in there and breathe together, shall we? And uh, Yeah, we'll I'd love to create, have you join us. Yeah, then we'll all create a work positive culture. Brett, thank you so much, yeah. my friend. It's been amazing having you on this episode and I look forward to spending more time with you in the future. Thank you so much, Brett. Thank you. Real pleasure, Dr. Joy. Congratulations. And thank you so much again for having me on. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Work Positive Podcast. Please share this podcast with your friends who are HR and small business leaders so they can do one thing today to create a positive work culture that increases productivity and profits. I'd like to give you a free work positive course just for listening. It's called Something to Talk About. And it's transformed the work conversations of so many people all over the world. Get your free copy when you go to workpositive.today slash something to talk about. And you can start transforming your conversations today. Remember, it pays to work positive.